Welcome. Today we're going to discuss how to use LifeRay sites to create digital experiences. We're going to survey some core LifeRay features from the perspective of a business practitioner, someone who wants to use LifeRay to help their business grow and enable users to share information and collaborate. Here's an overview of the most important points for this section. Every LifeRay page belongs to a site. Sites not only contain pages, they also contain content. This content does not necessarily have to be displayed on a page. Sites and page templates are LifeRay features that allow site designers to reuse useful page configurations and layouts. Each site in LifeRay can have both a public page set and a private page set. A site's private page set is only accessible by site members. Site memberships are also important in LifeRay since, by default, site membership grants access to many different kinds of content within the site. Each LifeRay site has a site membership policy, which can be one of open, restricted, or private. Any user can join an open site. Any user can see a restricted site in the list of sites in the LifeRay instance, but could only make a membership request. The request must be approved by a site administrator in order for the user to become a member. The private sites aren't even visible in a LifeRay instance's list of sites, and users must be added by site administrators. Permissions within sites can be assigned either through site roles or through teams. The most important difference between site roles and teams is that the permissions defined for site roles can be applied to multiple sites, whereas the permissions defined for a team exist only within the site where the team was created. Before you begin the exercises, make sure you've installed the latest release of version 8 of the JDK. To download the JDK, you can use the provided link. There's also a link to installation instructions. Also, make sure that you've installed LifeRay on your machine. If you're on Windows, we recommend installing LifeRay to the C colon slash LifeRay path. If you're on Mac or Linux, we recommend installing LifeRay to a LifeRay folder in your user's home directory. It doesn't actually matter where you install LifeRay, but using these paths can help to avoid confusion during the exercises. Also, Windows has had problems dealing with paths longer than 255 characters, so a short path is ideal for LifeRay. The use case we'll be discussing in this section involves the Livingston Hotels and Resorts organization. This is a fictitious organization, but you can think of it as a large hotel chain that needs to build both an employee intranet and a public website. The Livingston organization wants an intranet to help its employees share information and collaborate better, and it wants a public website to attract customers with targeted content and to create an engaging user experience. Livingston's key performance indicators are first, to facilitate more employee collaboration in a secure online environment, and two, to make it easy for new sites, pages, and content to be published and to go live. So, what are sites? Let's learn a little more about sites in LifeRay. Sites not only contain pages, they also act as repositories for many different types of content. These different types of content are called LifeRay assets. Examples of LifeRay assets include documents, blog posts, wiki articles, knowledge base articles, and so forth. Widgets, also known as portlets, are applications that can be added to pages. These applications can display site content, including custom kinds of content, on pages. Remember that each site contains a distinct set of content. LifeRay encourages administrators to respect site boundaries and to use site memberships to control which users can access which content, instead of trying to cross site boundaries by sharing or displaying content from one site in another site. LifeRay provides a global site for use cases where content needs to be shared across multiple sites in a LifeRay system. Web content articles are HTML fragments designed to be displayed on a page. They can be structured and styled with XML structures and free marker templates. Documents and media files are files that users upload to share with each other or simply for backup purposes. These files can be of any type. They can be Word documents, PDF files, images, video or audio files, text files, binary files, and so forth. Other common asset types include blog posts, wiki articles, forms, 
message board posts, knowledge base articles, and so forth. LifeRay's asset framework provides a set of features that can be used with any type of LifeRay asset. These features include tags and categories, default metadata, and comments and ratings. Tags and categories are labels that can be applied to different kinds of assets to make searching for them easier or to facilitate custom processing of the assets. Being able to comment on any kind of asset can be helpful in many situations. For example, it might be nice to enable users who shouldn't have permission to edit certain assets to still be able to view the assets and comment on them. Several newer LifeRay features that are available in LifeRay DXP 7.3 include content pages and content page templates. Content pages provide more flexibility than the traditional widget pages in LifeRay. Page designers can drag and drop reusable page fragments to them and then customize the content in order to quickly create and publish new content and pages. Display pages for specific types of assets and custom navigation menus are also available in LifeRay 7.3. Now it's time for a knowledge check. Sites are groups of content. Site pages are the part of a site where the content is displayed. The asset framework is a set of features that can be applied to all types of content.